I want to hear the rest of the story about management because you said management called the plaintiff and then what happened? So, yes, so... You can do this if you want. Oh, yeah. Illustrate yeah, so, so Ms. Harris... <laughs> so Ms. Harris went to my school and she was on the phone with the manager. Wait, why did you go to the school? Because uh, we had agreed to meet at the bank and I wanted to have a promissory note that he would pay me back. So I went and got the money out of the bank. And then I said... He told me he would pay it back, pay me. And you didn't trust that? I just, I don't know. I just decided to go get a promissory note because I didn't want to get burnt. But from his answer, he sounds like he's been helping you with things and you've been going to church together. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand the urgency at the time to it go to money. a school looking for him and, and trying to get him to sign this promissory note like you've been burned by him before. No, it was money that I had put aside for something that I needed. All right. I'm sorry, I interrupted your story about management so you can pick the phone back up yeah so <laughs> she so she was on she was on the phone with management so i come outside and she's talking to the manager and the way she's talking to the manager is just like she wasn't being respectful so i'm like hey let me let me talk to the manager real quick because i was trying to figure out like how we can solve the situation so i was talking to the manager and she was saying hey um see this all would have been this all would have been a different situation if you would have just um went to me when that incident happened and i'm like Dang, so, so why didn't you go up to her when the incident happened? Like, the accident happened, why didn't you communicate that with her? And they said that they wouldn't have charged her had she just come to forward and to the management? Communicated and communicated. That's what the manager said. She said it would have been a different scenario if she just communicated the fact that there was damage made, but she was, like, trying to cover it up. So, and then that's what the management has said. The management was like, oh, you were trying to cover it up to make it seem like nothing happened. And Do you so have a response for that? I wasn't covering it up. I got, I got busy doing other things, and then I finally went over there. And she wanted the money then? Right, as okay. soon as possible. Mr. Berry, you talked about the plaintiff harassing you and your mom. Were you living with your mom in the building? No. The same no, building or no? no? I'm, not, I'm not living with my mom. I'm okay. just... Um, my mom has a lot going on, and so I was trying to communicate with her, like... This is a me and you situation. Do not go to my mom. Why did you go to his mom? He's grown. I didn't know 21. he had moved out of there. So you were just looking for him? Yeah, I was looking for him. You know, you promised on the 17th. The 17th is gone. You have his number. Why he involve his mother? He didn't answer. How did your mom feel about it? Well, my mom had told me, um, Miss Harris ended up looking in my mom, like, going into my... That's what my mom had said. She said, going into my mom's house looking for me. And then you went to his school looking for him, too? I went to his school. The next time I talked to his mom, she said, come here, because I thought I'd seen his car out there. And she said... Come on, come up to my house. I'm going to show you he's not in here. And I said, I don't need to go up to your How house. many times had you Twice. gone to the house? Okay. Twice. How many times did you call her? Once. How much money did you give her towards this $1,000? Because I saw $5. Yeah, I, I did give her uh, five, 15 bucks. I gave, I gave her $15 and then 13 And then she had to give it back. You didn't have the money. You just didn't want to tell her that. You were avoiding her. Yeah. That part. Yeah. Y'all got anything else? No. All right, we're good? All right, we'll excuse you while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you both very much. Okay, Ms. Harris, Mr. Berry, we have deliberated and the court has reached a verdict, but it was not unanimous. And let me start by saying all three of us agreed that had this been simply a matter of you coming to court to sue to recover without a promissory note, all three of us would have agreed that because you, Mr. Berry, were helping Ms. Harris the way that an employee might help an employer that absent some gross negligence, it would fall to you to bear the damage. You would not have a claim. Now, Judge Tuelde and Judge Corriero believe that that is still the case, that the promissory note, there's no consideration for it. And they believe, as I do, that Mr. Berry kind of signed the promissory note because this had become a very uncomfortable situation for him. And you were at his school, and he felt bad. And I understand that. And... You know, let me say, we don't think there's a bad guy in this situation. You know, it's just about where the damage falls and where the loss falls. So, Ms. Harris, the, my co-judges felt that even with the promissory note, there was no consideration for signing the promissory note, and so you're not entitled to recover on that. Had it been my verdict, I would have found that the two of you resolved the situation with the promissory note, and therefore you would have been obligated to pay her as a result of signing that, not as a result of the underlying incident. However, majority rules. So the verdict of the court is to dismiss the plaintiff's complaint, and we wish you both the best.